Actually, the sodium azide is the one that is a, is a solid powder. They put it in an air bath. When things hit, this azide liberates a nitrogen gas, and they you know, balloon is being generated. So this is a compound that is actually being used, but it's a shock sensitive. And when you look at that, you know, this is a, you can immediately see this. I know nitrogen likes to be positive. That one you guys know. So at the expenses, N3 should be negative. Right? So that's something that you start to, by looking at somebody, right, sodium azide, azide must be an azide anion. And so the N3 minus, so nitrogen, three nitrogens are bonded together. It can be double bond, it can be single bond, and there are lone pairs, and there, <coughs> and there overall charges is negative. Okay, so here I, I, I made this extra comment on here. So this, we are talking about nitrogen, right? So that's the uh, second row. So the must obey the octet row. Okay, so that's, uh, that's so on. And this is because we are talking about second row element. And then you need to look at the former charges and you try to minimize as much as I can. So charge can be spread out evenly as much as I can. You know, by nature, you have a negative charges. So one of nitrogen must have a negative one, but you know, if they have a plus two, minus one, minus three, <coughs> it make more sense? Yeah, plus one, minus, minus two, zero, then that's uh, actually not, not a good scenario compared to only one developed negative charges. So big former charge numbers means charge is being delocalized, uh, charge is localized, so that the, you, are, you have a not charge spreading. Delocalization of the electron cloud is not uh, happening. So, and uh, this one is actually giving you the structure looks like this. And so this is actually additional redundant practice for you to come up with, let's look at the octet row and let's look at the charge, uh, former charges. So let's look at here, for example, here, nitrogen. How many electrons do they have? Four, right? Not good, right? How about here? They got 10, not good. These are violating the octet rule, right? So this is, this is not good. What about here? The one in the middle? One, two, three, four. Eight electrons, right? Eight electrons. There you go. This is, this is actually good in, in that own sense. So this is, I guess, good. So among this, which one is even more? So let's, let's look at that and let's find out the, the worst of the worst. And the answer is coming from the former charges. So let's look at here. This one is comes in N should have five. How much how many electrons do they have? Seven, there you go. So minus two. I only need five, but you give me two more extra electrons. So therefore, minus two charges here. The other one it looks the same, minus two charges here. And like I suggested before, the way that I love to do is overall is a negative one. This must be plus three, right? It can, that can be, this cannot be good. But let's look at the other one. How about this? This one, four more charges, five is shoot. One, two, three, four, five, five. This is good. This is zero. And what about here, four more charges cancel? Although it violates octet rule. What's the four more charges? Should five and have five, right? And what's my four more charges? Without me calculating, just you know, okay. So which is among that even worse? On the right or on the left? On the 
right, right? This is bad, double bad. This is, this is the worst. Okay? And let's go up there and look at the former charges. And this, let's look at this. Once again, should five have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Minus two. I think that we have done that before. Yeah, it's the same thing as here. This one is a minus two. What about here? One, five is should. One, two, three, four, five. Five. This is zero. And then I guess this one must be plus one. And you, you can calculate it using that equation. Should five minus four, which is plus one. But that's a, sort of the, okay, you got three atoms, one is minus two, the other is plus one. Okay, let's look at the other scenario here. You have, what's the former charges? This is, should is five, have is six, right? So this is a negative charge. Okay. So that's a minus one. Same here, minus one. And I guess this one must be plus one. So you have a choices of minus, plus, minus, or plus one and minus two. Which one, which one is more evenly distributed? The one on the, on the left, right? So therefore, this is a double good. So this is the best. Okay. That, that, was, that was a question that Look at that, and can you find out which is the best form and which is the worst form? And this is how you do that. There's a little more, okay. So this is the last problem I remember. So this is actually quite tricky. Uh, it's similar to your last problem of your post-lab question. You, you guys welcome to ask the TA for more things on this. This is an N204. So uh, what I do is, I mean, I, I do that like, like this, right? Two times five, four times six, 34 electrons. And then now, you know, this is what we've been doing so far, right? Using the bond, subtract it, and do the octet rule, and outside in, and then, then finally consider the four charges. That's what we've been doing it. The only kind of tricky part of this is nitrogen is two. So <coughs> I'm gonna put the two nitrogen, it's like a double header, the two atoms in the middle, and I'm going to put oxygen on the outside. So it's not a single atom they're putting in, and you can you can put this one just like that. And then I can do the resonance structure. So we can quickly do one, two. Three, four, five. So that means 10 electrons. So you have 24 electrons left. And then I'm going to use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3, 4, 5, 6. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> so I, I guess I have used them all already. So I guess. Uh, Four times six is 24. No electron left, so I cannot assign any extra electron to the nitrogen in the middle. And then you, you do the normal practice, right? This one is negative, negative, <coughs> negative, negative. And what do, what do you think? And they should be able, these two have a two, Nitrogen must have a four plus, right? And I guess one of them has a two plus and two plus. So this is a two plus, two plus. And you can do that practice again. Should is five for nitrogen. You have three. So five minus three is two, and two and two. So that's a starting point, and you, you have you seen enough that this is not good. Uh, it's, it's an easy share of the double bond. This way, for example, this way. So then I'm going to I'm going to have the 
nitrogen is this. So nitrogen, nitrogen, oxygen this. Double bond. Minus, minus. So I, I didn't show all the rest of the. Let me show you the, the lone pair electron for now, and then I will not repeat that again because it just has to be given. This is a, when this is oxygen double bond has a two sets of lone pair. Oxygen is negative has three sets of lone pairs. And this one is now nitrogen in the middle. Look at that. This overall is a neutral, so this two has a positive, so this one must be plus and plus. So that, that completes my resonance structure of A form. And then I need to write it down more, which is a this resonate nitrogen with double bond here, double bond there. Single bond, single bond, minus, minus, plus, plus. It's just a symmetry game here. Nitrogen, oxygen here. Uh, okay. So I think I, I use them all. So let's go to the other way. Here. Nitrogen, nitrogen, and double bond here, double bond here. Minus. So look at the <coughs> double bond, whether they go this way, they can be opposite, they go this way, they can be the other opposite. So there are four kind of combinations that they can go around and develop those resonance structures. And so far so good. And then the final thing is, this is a, what is called a determine the average nitrogen oxygen bond order. Okay? Have you heard about bond order? It will be, it will be discussed a lot. The bond order is actually, you, you, will, you will hear that bond order is in the actually molecular orbital theory. If you Google the bond order, this is a formula for bond order. Number of electron in the uh, bonding, number of electron in the anti-bonding divided by two. I think, oh, this is not correct. <laughs> I guess uh, this wonders of Google. Don't trust anything. So this is a bonding, and this is an anti-bonding. Uh, anyway, well, what I'm saying is, I'm not here to even kind of ask you to remember this. You you don't have to remember this for now. But this is a, something the word that they are using it. So. You've been, we've been telling you about single bond, double bond, triple bond, but actually there the bond has a one and a half bond, one and, one and a, two and a half bond, even one third of the bond, one plus 1.33 bonds. And these are the all possible because if you count the, those numbers. So what's more relevant here is I made a table here. These are the example of uh, the 18 atom. You see the one line? That's a single bond, that's bond order one. Okay. I don't know why they say bond, but bond order is more like a molecular orbital, but they use it this way as well. So this, if you see two bonds, that's two. If you see three bonds, that's three. That's a bond order. Those, and let's go up and look at these structures. And they're talking about what's up average bond order between N and O. What's my bond order? Two. One, one, two, right? Overall, how many bonds you have? BO here, I guess NO bond order. You've got four bonds, right? Four, four, four pairs. And how many bonds do you see? Six, right? So what's that? 1.5. So this is a one and a half bond order. Bond. This is something that you guys need to deal with. Uh, if you, this is just an extra for you. Uh, you know, I I draw this way, right? 
double bond and double bond and minus minus plus and plus. Sometimes you can, this one can have this. And then you, you need to have something looks like that. And I guess this one, you have to deal with an oxygen on the other side. This is unlikely, but this is also possible and that's your uh, post-lab questions. So this part is always easy, there's minus and the plus. But if you look at the other part, by putting this one and you, if you do this, uh, you, can, you can get. So let me, let me do this one. So you guys can think about putting NON in the middle and then put the rest of the oxygen on the other side. So if I, it's actually, if I, if I do this one, it's, it's fair for me to put NON. So this is what your post lab problem is about. Non means NON in the middle and put the oxygen in the outside. It's unlikely, but that's also possible. They want you to do the practice on that. And then what do you do? Uh, you do one, two, three, four, five, okay? So five electrons, how many electrons do we have before? 34. 34 minus 10 electrons we're using for bonding here. So that's uh, four, 24 electrons. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so that's uh, how many electrons then? 18. You got six electrons left. And then I'm going to put oxygen in the middle to be like that. And that will be full electron I use. Full electron left over. It looks like this one has only eight, so my choice will be here. So that will be my starting point. Okay, that will be my starting point, having NON in the middle, not just a double N. And if the problem asks you that, I want to see NON bonding in the middle, at the center of the molecule, then you gotta start from here, and then, uh, this one is a negative charge, that's a negative charge, that's a negative charge, 